Hello and welcome to another episode of Cracking Addiction. My name is Thalipan Naren and I'm joined as always by Fergal Armstrong. In the episode of Cracking Addiction today, we're going to be talking about one of the long-acting injectable buprenorphine formulations, Buvidal. Now, Buvidal is manufactured by Camerus and it comes in both weekly and monthly formulations. The weekly strengths are 8 milligrams, 16 milligrams, 24 milligrams, and 32 milligrams. And the monthly strengths are 64 milligrams, 96 milligrams, and 128 milligrams. So I've just spoken a bit about different formulations. But Fergal, can you tell me a bit more about how Buvidal is so effective and how it helps stabilize people who are on uh, opioid substitution therapy? So you're absolutely right, Philippe, and Buvidal is a long-acting injectable buprenorphine uh, formulation, and it comes in multiple weekly doses and multiple monthly doses. And I think more recently it's important to emphasize that Buvidal now is available in Australia at a 160 milligram dose. It's not just uh, PPS uh, licensed yet, but it is licensed by the uh, TGA. So... It consistently is able to achieve plasma levels of buprenorphine above one nanogram per mil. And we know that one nanogram per mil is the level needed to prevent opioid withdrawal. And we also know that two to three nanograms per mil are the levels needed to prevent euphoria due to the administration of other opioids and also to block craving. So and in clinical trials, we know that Buvidal rapidly reduces withdrawal symptoms. It's very, it gives a lot of patient satisfaction and it reduces significantly the number of positive urine tests over a treatment period and is associated with high levels of treatment retention. So we know what it does on the tin and we know why it does it on the tin and we know that it's effective in terms of patient experience. And well, that's one of the key things I want to emphasize because, you know, we all say that look, buprenorphine is buprenorphine. And buprenorphine in, subox in uh, sublingual buprenorphine is just buprenorphine. And the buprenorphine in LAIB, including buvidal, is just buprenorphine. But the efficacy of this formulation over time in terms of treatment retention is spectacular. So we know roughly buprenorphine uh, retention with uh, sublingual buprenorphine over about 12 months is about 50%. But the retention in treatment for uh, Buvidal in recent studies has been shown to be 70%. So we know that treatment retention reduces comorbidity and saves lives. And so overall, Buvidal saves lives, improves retention, reduces comorbidity, reduces illicit drug use, increases the proportion of clean urine drug tests, rapidly suppresses um, cravings and withdrawal symptoms, and is very, very flexible. That's the key thing about Buvidal is its flexibility. It has weekly doses. It has monthly doses. It's, um, and it's got a wide dose range. So really, there is a Buvidal to suit, to suit practically everyone. That's great information to hear, Fergal. And I think the information you mentioned about getting uh, the buprenorphine level above that one mil nanogram per mil level to, to decrease the withdrawal symptoms is very important. But another important thing is also the bioavailability of Buvidal. So compared to Suboxone, where we uh, estimate that the bioavailability is between 10 to 30%, we have 100% bioavailability with Buvidal. And also in terms of getting to peak plasma levels, we're talking about for the Buvidal weekly up to 24 hours to get to peak plasma levels. And with the monthly injection, actually six to 10 hours to get to that, uh, to that plasma level. So we're talking about medications that are very highly absorbed in the body and will provide an effect uh, within an appropriate time frame as well, which is another great thing about the Buvidal preparation. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. So, look, when you're changing from uh, buprenorphine, sublingual buprenorphine, onto Buvidal, you're going to have a difference in, in plasma levels. So with, with sublingual buprenorphine, you have rapid fluctuations of 
serum uh, buprenorphine levels from the highest to the lowest within a 24-hour period. The whole point about Buvidal is you don't get those daily fluctuations. You either get a weekly fluctuation or a monthly fluctuation. So patients' experience will be different. And patients need to be advised that they won't feel the same on Buvidal compared to sublingual buprenorphine. So when you say to patients that they'll feel different, the immediate thing they worry about is withdrawal. It is incredibly unlikely for any patient to go into withdrawal within the first 24 hours of the administration of an LAIB, such as Buvidal. Because remember, that's when we have the peak concentration, the time to peak concentration for uh, the monthly is, as you say, six to 10 hours, and then for the weekly is 24 hours. So you are just not going to be underdone. You're not going to be undercooked. And we know that the kinetic data shows that the Buvidal is able to provide a sustained elevation in plasma buprenorphine over time of at least one nanogram per mil. So it's just not going to happen, at least not in theory. But certainly in the first half of the treatment window, withdrawal is really not a possibility unless you're doing a direct induction, which we'll come to in a second. So what you have to understand is that patients will be will experience something different. They, they need to be advised that they may feel different. They won't get the same peaks of the highs that they might have had with the sublingual buprenorphine. And they just need to accept that it's going to be slightly different. And, you know, we, we need to manage patient expectations and treat symptoms. If patients come to me and say, oh, I'm in withdrawal, uh, it's immediately a cow scale. And I'm all immediately looking for the symptoms of uh, the, the, the signs of opioid withdrawal, which are difficult to produce factitiously. So uh, borborygmy, meiosis, cutis anserina, erection. Sorry, medriasis, not meiosis. Great. Now, Fergal, starting someone on Buvidal is a relatively straightforward thing to do. There's a very useful table that comes with the preparations and is also readily available online showing yeah. the conversion between suboxone doses to Buvidal weekly and monthly preparations. Mm. For patients who are on low-dose suboxone, defined as uh, 6 milligrams or less, uh, they're only eligible for the weekly Buvidal pre pre preparation, which is 8 milligrams. But beyond that, there are different strengths uh, for the Buvidal weekly and monthly based on the suboxone dosage that someone's on. Now, the marketing and the guidelines do recommend commencing on Suboxone initially for about seven to eight days and getting on a stable dose of that before transitioning over to a Buvidal weekly or monthly preparation. But one can induct someone on Buvidal directly. Could you talk us through the process for that, please? Yeah. The, the key principle for buprenorphine induction, by whichever product you're going to use, be it sublingual buprenorphine or an LAIB, is to make sure that the patient is in withdrawal. Because as we know, buprenorphine is a partial agonist with high avidity. So if a patient is neuroadapted and is, is, has got opioids on board, buprenorphine will displace those other opioids from the mu receptor, and because it's only a partial agonist, will tickle the receptor for only half as much, and that will cause a withdrawal. Now, as you say, um, the standard way of starting buprenorphine with, in Buvidal is simply to, you know, jump off a week's worth of sublingual buprenorphine. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, okay, so you need seven days of buprenorphine. Um, well, do you give the Buvidal on the last of the seven days or do you give the Buvidal after seven days? And the product information says after seven days. But if you think about it, I mean, if you're starting someone on weekly Buvidal, the T max is 24 hours. So I actually say, give the last dose of um, uh, sublingual buprenorphine nine o'clock in the morning, and if everything's okay, 20 past nine, give the first dose of the weekly formulation because you, because you know that the Tmax is not gonna occur for another half hour, another, another day, sorry, for 24 hours. It's a bit more tricky with the monthly preparation because we know that the Tmax is six to 10 hours. If people are really anxious about going into withdrawal, I'll happily give the two in the same day, the last of the seven days, plus the first monthly injection. You know, because at the end of the day, it's a partial agonist, you know, and if someone's fit and healthy without significant cardiorespiratory or hepatorenal comorbidity, it should be okay. But again, I have to emphasize that is outside product information, which does stipulate 
administer the buprenorphine in Bruvidal after the day after the last buprenorphine sublingual. Now, in terms of doing a direct induction, so again, we we're worried about the um, we're, we're worried about precipitated withdrawal. So. The key, the, the product information now recognizes common practice, which is to go direct induction. So assume, assuming patients are in withdrawal, the recommendation is to give about 16 milligrams of Bruvidal weekly and then see how the patient goes. And you can give additional eight milligram doses within that, uh, within that first week, so long as each injection is more than 24 hours apart or at least 24 hours apart. So you might find on day on day one, you might give 16 milligrams. Day two, you might give another eight. And day three or four, you might give another eight. So the maximum in the first week would be 32. The second weekly dosing would be the cumulative total of the first week's uh, Bouvardel. And then you would then decide whether or not to maintain somebody on weekly or whether or not to shift them on to, on to monthly. It sounds somewhat complicated, but really, when you actually do it in practice, so long as you've got the dosing schedule in front of you, it's fairly easy. It is. It is quite easy. And the frequency of dosing is also relatively easy. For yeah. Bouvardel Weekly, it's usually administered every seven days, plus or minus two days, so between yeah. a five or nine day schedule. And for Bouvardel yeah. Monthly, the dose can be administered every four weeks, plus or minus uh, one week, so a three to five yeah. week schedule. And usually yeah. a steady state equilibrium is reached by about the fourth dose also. Yeah. So is, is that your experience as well, Fergal? And are you yeah. happy with those kind of protocols? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to emphasize that you don't get to steady state until at least the fourth injection, if not the fifth injection, which means that you're not going to really be stable until that point, which means you're going to get t timing variations. And in my experience, you probably need to be administering Bouvardel monthly, maybe every three weeks gradually pushing up to that four week mark until you get to steady state. And the same with the weekly patients might not feel completely controlled with, uh, with uh, seven days Bouvardel and they might need it more frequently whilst they're titrating up. But certainly when you get to steady state, the weekly dose does last a week and the monthly dose does last a month for the vast majority of people. And in quite a few patients as well, I've found that it actually lasts a lot longer than a month as well. So you've got the yeah. fortunate people who can sometimes stretch out that Bouvardel monthly to five or yeah. six weeks as well based on yeah. effect. So it's really quite useful. It is. It is. Yeah. And I suppose that speaks to the patient variability. You know, patients are not automatons. Patients haven't read the textbooks. And and, and I think also once you're, once you're walking with a patient on their journey towards that steady state point, you have to walk with them and you have to acknowledge their fears and their feelings because they may experience opioid withdrawal, but they may also experience symptoms of, of, of the side effects of high doses of buprenorphine. Like, I mean, for instance, one example would be sweating. So, so, or the side effects of buprenorphine are sweating, agitation, headache, insomnia, nausea, constipation. So when you're inducting someone, remember you're, you're giving them relatively high doses of buprenorphine in the LAIB. And so for the next three, four, five days, depending on the product, they may feel relatively wired and agitated. And again, they might interpret that as overdose. Well, we know it's not overdose because you know, we'll do a chi-score and we'll look for signs that are difficult to reproduce factitiously. But we also know that um, withdrawal could be a possibility in the second half of the time window, be it the second half of the week or the second half of the month. But until you get to steady state, you really just don't know. Absolutely. And in the episode today, we've talked about Bouvardel, the different strengths of Bouvardel, the different formulations of Bouvardel, how to commence someone on Bouvardel, how long it takes to take effect, how to get to steady state and how to counsel the patient through that time period and how to monitor the, the patient during the time period on the Bouvardel preparations. So we've covered a fair bit of information in this episode of Cracking Addiction. But Fergal, is there something else that you'd like to talk about with regard to the Bouvardel? Yeah, I think it's important to discuss how we handle it and store it and et cetera. So I think it's important to emphasize that um, all LAIB products, including Bouvardel, need to be stored securely. Bouvardel uh, has to be stored under 25 degrees centigrade. And it should not be um, 
refrigerated. It, it should not be put in a fridge. If you put, Bouvedal is an oil, basically, and what happens to oils when you put them in the fridge? They solidify and you just can't inject it. You can't use it. So it's got to be stored at effectively room temperature, but underneath 25 degrees. It's got to be securely stored. And the administration of Bouvedal is, it, it, I think it needs to be talked about. So can you talk to us about the needle and the needle placement and the sites of Bouvedal? Absolutely. So Bouvedal is administered to, through a 23 gauge syringe and needle. And the locations for Bouvedal, it's a subcutaneous injection. And usually it's administered either in the abdomen, the uh, upper arms, the lateral thighs and the buttocks. So those are the classic areas that we administer Bouvedal subcutaneously. So it is really important not to administer this medication intravenously as the gel will solidify in any vessel that it forms and will cause emboli and or occlusion of the vessel. So, and do not administer this preparation intravenously or intramuscularly. This is a subcutaneous injection. So yeah. that is very important to, to state. Would yeah, you agree with think... those things that I stated, Fergal? <laughs> Absolutely. I once gave a presentation and I said, only subcutaneous. And a guy walks in and said, what happens if you can't do it subcutaneous? If you just do it, I am. And everyone in the room started, course, only subcutaneous. So, yeah, the needle is a, it's a quite a small needle and it has to be administered perpendicular to skin. And that is in contradistinction to sublocate, which we'll be talking about in another, in another episode. It's only subcutaneous and it's in those areas, as you mentioned. Excellent. So we've covered a fair bit of information on this episode of Cracking Addiction. And in following episodes, we'll be talking about the other formulation of long-acting injectable buprenorphine and a few other tips and tidbits we have. But for the episode today, thanks for your company and bye for now. Bye.